The sales to production handoff is one of the messiest, least defined, and oftentimes one of the biggest problems in painting companies. Hi, my name's Chris and I'm with Boolean Automation. I'm the former marketing director of an $18 million home services company, and now I automate painting companies. Me and my team with over 60 different painting companies from around the country and personally help optimize over 16 at this point. What I love about what we get to do is diving under the hood with all these different companies and start to see the similarities and the pros and cons of doing things in different ways. So in this video, I want to dive specifically into my recommendation for the sales to production handoff and how you should really define the requirements, the process, the check boxes, everything that is needed for sales to officially win a job and hand it over to production so production can efficiently schedule that and produce the work and sales can get back out to sell more jobs. Let's dive in. All right, so I have a quote here for Darth Vader and we're going to start this process with the customer accepting the bid. So I'm first going to pretend like I'm Darth Vader and I got my quote. In this case, we're gonna pull up the Paint Scout quote. So Darth Vader accepts the quote. So I sign, accept, and then what we have is an automation that automatically pushes the most recent data from the quote back to the deal. And it's also going to, obviously you're gonna get your notification from Paint Scout saying, hey, customer just accepted a quote. That is not winning a deal. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I see companies make is that the quote acceptance from Paint Scout and they just immediately send that to the scheduler and I do not recommend doing that. It is a terrible idea. You need the sales rep to get eyes on the quote, verify all the information, make sure there's no loose ends or things that he forgot to get from the customer or whatever. So first thing is just make sure that you are not sending an acceptance from your estimate software directly to scheduling. It should always come back to um, your CRM system. And in this case, you can see here when I refresh, um, it takes about 60 seconds. Uh, in just a moment, you'll see that the bid is now in the customer accepted stage. And we're going to have uh, an opportunity for the sales rep to come in and verify everything that they need to here. So um, refreshing here and there we go. So it's in the customer accepted proposal stage. And now quick side note, you could also, like oftentimes people will be, and let me first make sure I'm in the owner of this deal because I'm just using a sample account here. So we're going to say that Chris, oh, it's not scheduled by, I want owner. Uh, deal owner is Chris Keeper. Okay, perfect. So I'm the owner. Um, and so I'm gonna go to deals and click open in new tab. Um, so the other thing is that from your deals window, when I'm looking at deals that are owned by me, you will see that there is a column that is customer accepted proposal. So every day when you're looking at your sales pipeline, I always recommend glancing at the customer accepted proposal. And this is just in case you missed the notification email that comes from Paint Scout, this is your chance to be like, oh yeah, I need to go get that deal from Darth Vader finalized and, and win it. So this is the one job process that I'm going through right now. And you're gonna go through and verify, yep, all that information is good. In this case, like, oh, the customer's phone number is wrong. It's actually a zero. Um, this is just because of a test that I was running. So I can update that. Make sure you hit the save button every time you make any of those changes. You know, project type is good. Deal description, the event name. You know, you could decide what stuff is relevant or what stuff you want to have on the side here. But I could put some notes in here that are like, customer said to watch the flowers. And then uh, if I know who my project manager is going to be, I can say, I can put that in now. The type of crew that we're gonna need on this one is, and again, keep in mind that all of this stuff on the side is uh, customizable. So you can choose to remove, add fields, whatever it is, but that's part of the process that needs to take place is define what specific things need to be filled out and then um, have those all listed here on the side. So we can go through finished, um, you know, the rest of these and make sure that's all good. The other thing to note is that all these sections here, the marketing information, this is about this deal. We've got sales information down here. 
know that you can customize this and rearrange them however you want. In fact, one of the things that I really like doing is you can actually make a new card that we will call. So I'm going to click add card. We're going to create a card and this is called customer or uh, acceptance. And so this is going to be a card that is specifically all the information that we want a sales rep to fill out when the, when it's accepted. So I can have this set up to be that the deal stage where this card shows is only at the customer accepted stage. So just when the deal moves to customer accepted, this card's going to show, and I can even move this to, um, where is my customer accepted? Oh, I got to put a property in here first. So we're going to say that we need to have the amount and what else do we want to have? The um, project type, the work order and uh, quote, quote URL. And again, imagine there's a bunch of other things, but the point is that I can put that there and now I can move this to the top. And this card is only going to show up now when the deal is in the customer accepted stage. So it kind of is a great way to filter and keep things top of mind. So like you can see here, here's my customer acceptance section, but maybe this is uh, noise or not relevant when it's in the follow-up process. So if I move this back, you'll see, I move this to sales follow-up three, it's gone. But it's only when it's in that customer accepted stage, I could have a whole series of fields that I need to make sure to fill out and just keep it top of mind for the estimator. I just wanna interrupt this real quick to say, if anything in this video is valuable, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with a peer group, a Facebook group, get the word out about what we're doing here at Boolean. As you know, the algorithm at YouTube looks at how many people like the videos, how many people subscribe to the channel, and I'm getting people messaging me saying, thank you so much, this is great content. So if you're one of those people, like the video, drop a comment, and continue to engage with this content because it helps the channel out and allows me to produce more content for you. Now let's get back to it. After you have filled out or checked the boxes on all this stuff, you then can move this to one. And here's the other thing that I love about HubSpot is when you move the deal to one, this is like the final check or the final way to make sure that nothing is going to production without properly being, um, checked and managed and all the required fields are filled out. So this little pop-up is called dependent properties. And you can say, these are all the things that are required to be filled out in order for you to save the deal to the one stage. Um, in this case, we have this little check. Uh, it's like a double check here that says ready to process. So if I were to mark no, it's not gonna send it to production. If I mark yes, which is what you're gonna be doing 99% of the time, um, it's going to send it to production. And then once it gets sent to production, it's going, the automation will move it to done. So then the rest of this here, again, you can see these are all the required uh, fields. And I, this, uh, some of these don't have asterisks. So these are suggested, they're not required right now. So I can save it without filling these out. But if you want to make any of this required, I'll show you how to do that real quick. And the way that you would do that is you're going to go to your settings, and then you're going to go to deals and pipelines, and then go to sales pipeline. And then in the sales pipeline under one, you click edit properties. And this is where you can add in any property values that you want. You can make things required or just have it show up. So any of these that are just here is saying, this is not required, but I am going to show in this card, these suggested or like um, fields that we want to check, but we're not going to force a sales rep to fill it out. So by doing that and customizing the lot, the properties here, this is how you ensure that sales never sends a deal to production without all the information that's needed because they can't even win it unless they put that information in. So once you have agreed upon what the required properties are that need to get sent to production, make sure that you have them mapped in those one of two places. So we've got either mapping it in the, let's go back to my deal here. So you can, like I said, put it into this customer acceptance uh, card and make that card only visible when it's in the customer accepted stage. One thing I, I do want to point out about this, you are not creating new fields when you add properties to cards. 
there are hundreds of properties inside of HubSpot and you can even have them like this quote URL is the same exact field that we have down here. We're just moving it and consolidating it into a single area that makes it easier for sales reps to do their job when it's time to do their job. And then once I you know, move this to one, you're gonna see that um, I can go through and say, yep, that's good. Fill out the other information. They're requesting to start ASAP. The color consultants needed, no, there's not. Company cam updated, yes, I did. Did you do the electrical wires? No, okay. So I go ahead and hit save. Now it's gonna move it to one. And again, the card's gone because I've now done it. That doesn't mean the information is gone. The information's still in the deal. It's just back wherever we had laid it out, or it's possible that you could have information on a card that's just hidden in the background. So that's my recommendation for how to do the sales to production handoff. And again, it all starts with sitting down and asking yourself, what does production need to do this job well? And then what are we going to require sales to give in order to win a job? Let me know if you have any other questions. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for watching. What did you find valuable in this video? Leave a comment down below. If you have any other questions, ideas, suggestions for future videos, also love to see those in the comments and we will see you in the next video.